let us take a look at our note. So these are the steps that they're going to take to analyze null and alternative hypothesis using p-value. Let's go over one example together to see what's happening here. So in this example, we have the following scenario. It says, hypothesis testing using a p-value. In auto racing, a pit stop is where a racing vehicle stops for new tires, fuel, repairs, and other mechanical adjustments. The efficiency of a pit crew that makes these adjustments can affect the outcome of a race. A pit crew claims that it's mean pit stop. Guys, the mean value, the mean time, the average time is less than 13 seconds. So as a statistician, we randomly select 32 pit stop times and we found the mean which is 12.9 seconds. From past studies, the population standard deviation is 0.19 seconds. Is there enough evidence to support the claim at alpha 1%? So we should go to our board last slide with the computations. Take a look at the board here. The very first thing is, well, well, is sigma given to us? Sigma is given to us as 0.19 seconds. Remember that, go back to the question. The question is just right here. It says from past studies, you have population standard deviation, which is 0.19, right? Well, now, is your population normal or is the sample size larger than 30? Remember that you collected 32 pit stop times and it is larger than 30. So we're good to go to the next step. In the next step, we're going to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. So since we have a keyword, let's go back to the notes. Since we have a keyword, which says less than, less than, so it means that your alternative hypothesis is given and that is your claim. That mu is less than 30 and write down this is your claim. Since we have the alternative hypothesis, we can easily construct the null hypothesis. Mu or the population average time is larger than or equal to 13 seconds. Now we have to go to the next step. What is my alpha? What is the level of significance? Am I right? Here, the level of significance or alpha is given to you as 1%. So let's go back to the board. 1%. Point zero one or 1%. Now we need to build Z or standardized test statistic. It has a formula. X bar minus mean divided by sigma times square root of n. Well, from the example, we have all of these pieces of information. Z is equal to 12.9 minus 13 divided by 0.19 times square root of 32. We have all pieces of information to compute our Z or the standardized test statistic, which is going to be approximately negative 2.98. Very good. So we have this guy here. Now the question is, what is the P value? Since your alternative hypothesis is less than, we have a left tailed graph. So let's take a look at this. Left tailed graph. This is your Z, and this is your normal distribution, negative 
I'm going to just write here negative 2.98. So the area on the left hand side is your p value. P value. So let us calculate this p value. What is this probability here? So let's go back to our calculator. Second, Mars, normal CDF. The lower limit on the left hand side is going to be a small negative number, so negative 10, for example. And the upper limit is negative 2.98. Mean is zero, standard deviation is one. So to do the computation, p value is 0 0.0014. So p value is 0 0.0014. Now we need to compare. We need to compare the z value, the uh, p value with our alpha. P value is 0 0.0014. Is it less than or larger than your alpha, which is just 1%, percent, 0 0.01? Well, take a look at this. They have 0 0.00 and you have 0 0.01. Of course, p value is less than your alpha. So since p-value is less than alpha, our conclusion is we reject the null hypothesis. We reject the null hypothesis. It means that we support the alternative hypothesis or support alternative hypothesis. So at 1% the level of significance, we support the claim that the mean is less than 13 seconds. I would suppose you're interested in using your calculator to actually analyze the hypothesis testing. So what are we going to do as clear here? We're going to go to that and we're going to go to tests. So that and tests. Uh, after finding Z test, what are the signs for the mean? You want to find the actual data. If you have the actual data, you're going to enter them in your L1, L2, L3, and so on. But here we have stat, summary statistics. What is mean of zero? It is 13. What is sigma population standard deviation? It is 0.19. What is X bar? The average of your sample 12.9. Sample size 32, and since it's a left tailed, you're going to select the middle one, left tailed, less than, and then you're going to go to compute. Well, as you can see, the mean is mean, which is negative 2.98. It found the p value for you 0 0.0014. 0 0.0014. And then you can also graph this, but using your calculator, it gives you all the information that you need here. So again, for your, let's go back to that, test, Z test, and since we have statistics, standard statistics, we're going to enter this in the of values. Mu is of zero, mu is 13, sigma is given to us as 0.19, Bar or the sample average is 12.9. Then you have n, which is the sample size 32, and you're going to select less than minus about zero because it's a left held graph. Less than, you always look at the alternative hypothesis. Less than, left held graph, that's when you select less than. You can also use the graph. Graph the graph. Very good. So this is the total area on the far left gives you the p value, and this is your z value 2.927.